Bill Berman from Balance Catamarans and uh, the Multi Hole Company, and I'm here in Connecticut at the uh, Neil Pride Loft um, with uh, Bob Patterson, who has been building sails for what 40 odd years. 40 years now. Yeah, Bob and I uh, first met when we were youngsters in California, and uh, he makes the uh, sails for our Balance 451. But he built uh, sails for all kinds of different catamaran uh, owners, new and used, uh, whatever people need and um, one of the subjects that comes up a lot for me with when people are ordering a new boat or even a used one is what is the best complement of sails for a cruising catamaran and of course you're going to get differences of opinion on that but I thought it would be good to ask Bob because he's probably designed and made more catamaran sails than anybody else in the world and to just kind of get a feeling from him about what he thinks so what, what if you had a cruising cat yeah and you were going cruising, what sort of sales would you have on it? So multi-hull industry as we know it today is really pretty much matured and what you see on the boats uh, by and large across the spectrum uh, is a pretty conventional setup which uh, consists of obviously the mainsail, um, a lot of the boats will have a solent jib which is a non-overlapping often uh, self-tacking jib or a small gentleman, maybe 120% that just sheets just inside of the aft shrouds uh, when you're sailing upwind. Those two are what we consider the working sails. Um, they're going to be your heavy air sails. Obviously, the mainsail is going to have two or three reefs um, that allows you to sail safely in, in more breeze. And the gentleman is going to be furling, which allows you to reef, of course, as well. Uh, once you get outside of the, the standard, what we consider the working sails, the next two sails in line are what uh, we generically in the multi hull market refer to as screechers. Uh, they're known as reachers, code zeros, there's a million names for them. Um, code zero is, this, is the name that generally people s say when they're thinking of that type of sale. Um, and code zero is to one of these sales as a jacuzzi is to a hot tub, right? The code zero kind of became a uh, originally was a, a racing spinnaker used for light air, but definitely a spinnaker, whereas a screecher is more of a head sole. Um, but the sailing public at large, when we talk about these not quite upwind sails, we refer to them generically as code zeros. Yeah. Uh, the multi hull market, we refer to them as screechers. And really that's where the sail came out of, even though you've seen it cross platform now to uh, multi hulls such as Junos and Benetos have a similar type of reaching sail available. But it really, the genesis of it came out of the multi hull market. Wasn't that um, Randy Smythe? Was, was, that, was he the one that first came up with that name? Uh, yeah, Randy, I think Randy's name is Screecher, Screecher. for sure. Yeah, yeah. 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 And yeah. Uh, for those who uh, uh, know Randy Smythe, he's a great, great multi hull sailor. Yeah. Um, knows how to boat, make boats go extremely fast. He's a fast catamaran all the time. Olympian, super yeah. guy, great yeah. sailor. Yeah. yeah. Um, so the Screecher then is a large overlapping head sill. And um, uh, the, the technical definition of a head sill is that it's a triangle. I can draw it here for you real quick. But uh, a head sill by definition is a triangle and the mid girth of that sail, if this is your luff and your leech, this distance is 50% or less in the foot measurement. So it's a definition of a triangle as compared to a spinnaker, which I'm sure you know is more of a uh, rectangle shape this way. Yeah. So a uh, code zero or a screecher in this case is technically uh, a head sole. So we build them very large. Uh, they fly on sprits normally in front of the forestay. Uh, it can be a fixed sprit or folding sprit, you know, depending on the multi hull. Um, the sails are very high clue, big overlap. And now the reason for the high clue is to give you a wider range of sheeting angles, right? Exactly, and that's a good question, Phil. So, um, again, if this is our head sole here, and our multi holes down here, the higher the clue, uh, the more shallow the sheeting angle. It kind of splits the clue angle in half. And what, what why that's important is, is when you're reaching and you ease the sheet out, the sail stays trimmed properly. They, there's about an equal amount of tension on the leech in the foot. If you've ever been on a, a high-end monohull racing boat with a very low clue, if you ease the, out, uh, the jib sheet just an inch, the sail gets forward, but the leech opens up and goes away. Yeah, so it's too flat at the bottom, it's too and open at the top. And not doing anything at the top, right. absolutely. Yeah. So by having that high clue, you make a much more re reaching sail. 
And if you think about it, if you think of the traditional cruising monohull, like a Tahiti catch or a cutter rig, they always had a Yankee. They have a Yankee or a staysail underneath it, and the Yankee is this sail, mm -hmm. basically, but smaller, high clued because it's a good reaching sail. Yeah. And for those of you who are planning to go cruising, this is important because upwards of 70% of all the cruising we do worldwide is off the wind, Yeah. right? So you want sails that take you off the wind effectively. Um, so this, this creature then has the high clue, uh, large ov overlap, I'll just draw on the mast here basically. Um, and then the second reason for the high clue is to fa fa facilitate the sheeting position. Yeah. So typically, almost universally I should say, is the sheeting position comes back to where your spinnaker blocks mount very near the back of the boat or in the cross beamer uh, in, that, in that area. So there's no gentleman track required and it's a single point sheeting, high clue, full powerful sail, free flying, it's not connected to the forestay, it's on its own internal rope system with a furler on it. Yeah, yeah, your typical production cat, you're just gonna get your two working sails and getting a screecher or a jenniker is typically considered an upgrade. Right. And a lot of people ask, well, should I get one of those sails? Well, obviously, if a boat's going into a charter program, no, you don't want a screecher on it, you don't need a screecher. And the screecher is there to power up the boat when you're close reaching, beam reaching, uh, in lighter winds, for the most part. Um, yeah. And so, typically people aren't gonna order, order that kind of sail. I would comment that I noticed that some of the production builders offer what they call a, a jenniker, which, Generally, when I look at them, when I sell them used, they're like a spinnaker fabric. And yeah. it's kind of a light reaching sail, but it's a very inexpensive sail. Quite honestly, I don't see the utility of a gen of, of that type of sail on a catamaran. I just don't think it's going to be used very often. Well, I'd say it's it, it actually become a liability for the average cruising guy. Um, one of the reasons these sails have morphed into the direction that they are is the original screechers were kind of light air, more spinnaker-esque than these sails. Um, but they were still furlable. Yeah. Well, the practical reality of sailing, and anybody that's gone sailing in the Caribbean can attest to this, you sail over to an island, you find a great anchorage, you'll pick up a mooring, you drop the hook, you jump in the water, you have a few beers later you furled up your sails. Yeah. Now, if you have that lightweight nylon sail and you furl it up and leave it furled, it doesn't have UV protection on it because it's too light to put a UV cover on. And in short order, especially like in places like the Caribbean, three or four months, you start damaging the sail. Yeah. So I think one sail maker, certainly we, we figured this out ages ago, the way that people actually use the sails is you want to be able to furl it up, have it protected, yeah jump in the water, go for your swim, and then unfurl it and take off right. again, right? Yeah. So we build the sails heavy enough to support a UV cover. Yeah. And I think that's also important because the other place that these sails get used is kind of a, a, a I'll say a pseudo upwind sail in, yeah. in up to about 10 or 11 true. Um, if you've sailed a boat, uh, one of the multi hulls you have a lot of wetted surface, they're fairly heavy displacement, and if you have a Solon jib, a small jib, you can be a little underpowered in the very light stuff. So by putting this big sail up, you don't sail exactly close hauled because the rig dynamics don't really allow you to sail that close hauled, but you get the boat moving. You get it moving. And you get some air coming over the deck, all of a sudden in six knots of breeze where you might have thought about turning the motor on, you yeah. put this up, you crack off a few degrees, it's great sailing, the boat's moving, people are having fun. Yeah. Uh, it's it's yeah. a totally practical And that's sail where that the screecher type of sail, Code Zero, is so superior because it's beefy enough to handle some loads. Right. I mean, I think the biggest problem with what is why it's hard to carry those sails close to the wind when you get over eight knots, 10 knots true, is you have so much head stay mm -hmm. distortion mm -hmm. so that you had, end up having to crack off. But right. the fact is, if you have to crack off to keep that sail up in eight knots of breeze, you may actually be sailing fast enough to make up for the fact that you're not pointing aside. Yeah, yeah, depending how close. Yeah. yeah, so every catamaran has a range that, that it's gonna work in. Um, yeah, so I, I like having the screecher on the kind of cat. When people buy our catamarans, I've noticed the balance cats, they all order a screecher. Right. Um, obviously, you can get more head stay tension on, on a traditional longeron. So if you have, 
you know, a longeron running underneath the boat and under the beam that's really rigid without mm -hmm. stays, that can handle a bit more headstay yeah. tension yeah. than just a typical sprit, but still they, they're, they're really good.